This is a trident maple. It's been bonsai, and we're here in Skytook, Oklahoma, with Mike Roska at Roska Sales. Mike, what is bonsai? Well, bonsai is an art form that originally started in China about 3,000 years ago when the Chinese went out on the prairies and the hilltops and collected these trees with lots of character and brought them back and put them into pots. And hundreds of years after that, they started to train trees to look like these old gnarled trees that they used to go out and collect. And that's what the art of bonsai is now, is it's taking a tree and styling it and training it and trimming it over a certain amount of time to look like these trees that you used to be able to find in nature. And sometimes you're still able to find them, but sometimes you're not. So we grow our own. And bonsai is the art form of styling and training the trees. Today's definition of bonsai is a tree or a plant in a shallow container that has been artistically sculptured to look like a tree you might have found in nature, but only in miniature form. It's amazing. So it doesn't necessarily have to be an extremely old tree, but one that has been styled to look. Styled to look shape. like an old tree. The age we don't want to show, but the character of a tree right. that comes about by age generally is what we're trying to depict. So a lot of young trees with a lot of character are in many cases more valued than a lot of old trees without any character at all. Well, how did you get into bonsai? We got into it because of the depth of artistry that's involved with it and the therapy is, as well. The more you look, looked into the trees and the styling of them, the more you found out that there's things that you just don't know about. You're working with artistic rules as well as nature's rules on it. Mm -hmm. And I guess probably the depth of artistry involved with it, with it intrigued me. We love to outdoor plants and work with plants and things like this. And not only are you working in horticulture with bonsai, but you're working in an art form as well. It's almost like working with sculpture, a three-dimensional. It's not only the three dimensions of sculpture, but there's a fourth dimension, which is the, the fact that it's a living art form mm -hmm. and forever changing and continuing to be worked on. So it's and actually a four-dimensional There's an interaction there. You do things to the tree, and the tree responds and Absolutely. grows a certain way. It had better respond. <laughs> we hope it does. <laughs> you hope it does. We hope it does. Well, that's fascinating. Well, how old is this tree? This tree is about 20 to 25 years old. Now, it grew in a field for many years before it was taken down. Mm -hmm. We sawed the top out of it. It was about a 20-foot tall tree, and we virtually grew all new limbs on it at this height mm -hmm. to make it look like a tree as it did in the field, but only in miniature form. We've, uh, we've styled it for about 12 to 14 years, I guess, is what, how long we've worked on this one. Mm -hmm. I noticed you even have a bird's nest growing in the top. There was a bird that tried to build in here this spring, and we like to encourage that. We like to see birds in the trees. They, whenever we can fool a bird, you know, <laughs> we think we've done something. <laughs> You've done the real thing, We've done then. the real thing. Oh, that's fascinating. Well. Um, even the roots themselves have character, I noticed. This is one thing that we try to show in bonsai. Not only the tree itself, but its, its surface roots give the tree mm -hmm. the feeling of strength and character. So not only do you look at the foliage mass, but you look at the trunk and its roots. And what we try to depict, again, is a tree with a lot of character. And a tree with surface roots gives a feeling of strength and character and uh -huh. stability. Uh, on a tree like this that is deciduous, I, I expect it has a completely different look in the winter time. Spectacular the looks. Time. In the fall, you get primary colors of amber and gold uh -huh. and burgundy. And then when the leaves drop, if the tree is styled uh, correctly, you get to view the tree uh, with all of its limbs bare. And that's as, as beautiful a tree as when it's covered with leaves. Oh, yes. I Absolutely. So. And being a deciduous tree, it has to go through a winter as well. It I needs expect. to go through a winter season get a little bit of a rest, and at that same time, we can repot it and prune its roots and do the root maintenance that needs to be involved with, with doing a tree like this. You wouldn't want to take a tree like this and keep it in the pot forever without trimming its roots. It would become root bound and mm -hmm. under stress. So at that time, when it's dormant, we work on the roots. Well, now, show me how we can get started with a bonsai tree. Uh, All right, uh, you can do it one of three ways. You can take a tree of this size and start to style it artistically, or you can grow it from a seedling or a cutting to this size, mm -hmm. or you can take a huge tree and cut it back and start to style it. Do you have some that we can take a look at? Sure. Okay, sure let's do. do that. All right. So we get our bonsai material from a lot of different sources. We grow our own from seedlings and cuttings and things like this. We buy a lot of it from wholesale growers. 
And this is typical of the inventory or the stock that we'll work with if we're going to do a big tree and want a big tree fairly quick. Mm -hmm. This is a canardy juniper that's about five, or about five feet tall. And to begin with, it looks like an ordinary plant that you'd plant out in, in the uh, yard. From here, we go into its initial styling. Mm -hmm. And the initial styling consists of the wiring, oh my sculpturing gosh. the tree, maybe killing the top here, and placing the limbs artistically in a correct place to form a triangle, have a top or a pinnacle to it or an apex, and also positioning the limbs so one is not directly over the other. Mm -hmm. And this is some of your bonsai styling and some of the rules that you go by. You have alternating branches from left to back to right to the back to left and so on and so forth. We do that with large pieces of wire to hold these limbs in a, into a particular position. And that wire will retain those limbs in that position until it grows enough wood to stay there by itself. And this could be a matter of two or three months or 10 to 20 years. However, once the tree reaches a certain development stage after this, then it goes into a bonsai pot. And this is very oh, this similar is to what we're looking at. Now, this is not a canardi. It's a hinoki cypress. And a hinoki cypress is very similar in looks to, to the canardi. This mm -hmm. is a formal upright style. Now on this one we've killed some of the limbs on it because they were directly below some of the other foliage in nature they would die. And as the story goes of course there's an eagle that roosts right up here every spring on this big dead branch. I see. But we form it into a triangle as well as doing the root work and things like this. This looks a little bit more mature than the canardi mm -hmm. over here. And the canardi will look very similar to this as time goes by, about three to five years time is what we're looking at. So now you killed the top on this one, that's to, to show age. Age and tree. character sometime along the way, maybe lightning struck that old tree uh -huh. sometime along the way, or a windstorm or whatever, and it died back. And that's what we want to show is the character so in the tree. You can create a colorful history for that tree Absolutely. just by the way that you train it. Absolutely. So this and has only been trained for well, this, three years? No, this one has been trained for about uh, 10 to 15, 10 to 15 years. years. But they don't change much. After about five to 10 years, you won't see that much of a change in the looks. Mm -hmm. This one will look very similar to it in about five years. What continues to grow and change is the thickness of the trunk. It gets larger and larger and larger. You keep the foliage, for instance, pinched back so uh -huh. the dense foliage pads on the tree so it doesn't get large. And keep it trimmed back and things like that. And the only thing that really continues to grow is the large trunk and its surface roots. The tree in size stays virtually the same. Maybe in 25 years, it might be two or three inches taller. You're but it becomes it dwarf. keeping it dwarf, mm -hmm. keeping it pinched back. We trim its roots to keep it healthy. Rather than picking it up and putting it into a larger pot, we take it out of its pot, trim part of its roots, and put it right back in the same pot with new soil. And that, no. that root pruning has a, a, its own dwarfing effect on the it tree. It slows the tree's growth uh -huh. down a little bit. It sure does. And it, it keeps it healthy. Uh -huh. Keeps it totally healthy. The, uh, this is one style. It's called a formal upright. It's a rigid formal upright tree. Uh -huh. Its top is directly above its base. Its limbs are regimented around the tree. Very... Uh, 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 stylized tree with mm -hmm. very pronounced limbs that uh, it, it looks like it, it, it's it, its name, a formal upright tree. There are other styles of trees, might be an informal upright. We even have forest styles. Now this is a little sweet, uh, a silver maple forest. Uh -huh. We've worked on these trees for 11 years. The first eight years were straight on the roots themselves, on these big buttress roots. Yeah, I notice on the difference in this one, you've got these great roots exposed, makes the trees look ancient. That's one third the value of the bonsai is in its surface roots on a true mm -hmm. bonsai. And it does make it look ancient. Gives the tree a tremendous amount of character and you'd want to slip in there maybe on a Saturday afternoon when it's hot and sit down beneath its limbs and drink oh, a Pepsi yes. Cola. Oh yes, have a picnic something. under there. <laughs> Some of the artistry, too, is that the trees will have a tendency to lean out towards you. Subconsciously, you pick that up as looking friendly. We use odd numbers. We use uh -huh. the same artistic rules as a lot of different art forms. We use odd numbers. The, the, the subject is not ever in the center of the pot unless it's a round or a symmetrical pot. Mm -hmm. The back trees, although they appear to be shorter, really aren't shorter than the front trees. 
they only appear to be shorter because they're 50 feet further back in the forest. Right. You're fooling the eye to, to focus on a looking Giving into a forest. Absolutely, and you're using the same artistic uh -huh. rules as a disappearing railroad track in the painting. That's a good analogy. Sure. And tell me about this moss down here. The moss grows naturally on our soil that we utilize, and we spend more time taking the moss off on our true bonsai than putting it on because it covers <laughs> up, guess what, our great big roots that yes. we've been working on. But the moss helps aesthetically. It's mm -hmm. very pleasing, very soothing to the eye, but it also serves a purpose in it keeps the soil from being washed off. And it's a good plant to have on the top of bonsai because it, it does serve a multiple purpose. Now I can see in such a shallow pot as this and in our Oklahoma heat, you've really got to work on maintenance of these, particularly through the summer. Can you tell me about that a little bit? The maintenance uh, of them, <laughs> uh, maintaining a tree is very critical here in the Oklahoma weather. It, uh, this tree is in no deeper soil than the thickness of the trunk at its base, so it needs to be watered two or three times a day in mm -hmm. August. Mm -hmm. So this is nothing that you want to start as a low maintenance type hobby. No, this would not be the first tree that you'd start with by any means. You mm -hmm. might get one with a little bit deeper soil in it, such as this little mom A here. Mm -hmm. My 11 year old son does has done this one, and it's got deeper soil, so it's a little bit more forgiving in this mm -hmm. hot Oklahoma weather. And this is probably something that you'd want to utilize, whatever size of tree that you want, but the deeper the soil for a little bit of safety margin. Sure, on that. I can understand that. Well, the fact that if an 11 year old can do this, most any gardener should be able to, <laughs> Absolutely. <too. laughs> All it takes is a little bit of common sense uh -huh. and starting with the right material, really. Well, this is really neat. Um, well, we've looked at two different types of bonsai. What other types are there? Virtually any type that you want. Any type of tree that you want to bonsai is basically bonsaiable, if that's, a, if that's a word. <laughs> well, I understand you've got a greenhouse full. So let's go look let's at Let's go those. look at them, and I'll show you some different types. Okay. Well, Mike, this is really an unusual form here with the, the roots nestling around that rock. Tell me about this. Well, that's called a root over rock style, and it's a specific style in bonsai. Mm -hmm. Now, something I also want to point out on this tree, this is a Japanese maple, and it's, it's a traditional tree for bonsai. But from the roots on up, it's not a bonsai as of yet. It has not taken on the, any artistic styling whatsoever. So we've got another several years worth of work to do to style this tree mm -hmm. and make it as beautiful a tree bonsai wise on top as it is from the trunk on down through these roots. Once it gets styled correctly, then it becomes a bonsai and it's no longer a pretty Japanese maple in a pot. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Now to give you some idea as far away from tradition as the Japanese is into tradition is a jade. You can bonsai jade and this is a miniature leaf jade. Porticala afro, and we've actually trained it with wire to be an informal upright. You see how the trunk sort of squiggles yes. around here, the uh -huh. top still above the base, and we've placed the limbs throughout here. The tree is about seven years old, mm -hmm. and uh, we have also worked on the roots all this time as well as the top and the trunk. So from here on out, it's a maintenance. It's a type maintenance of care. project, getting uh -huh. these to fill out a little bit more foliage, and of course bringing it in the winter because it's not winter hardy. This uh -huh. makes a beautiful indoor bonsai. Oh, I imagine. Sure. But that's something we need to talk about. This is an indoor bonsai. Is an indoor bonsai versus the Japanese maple, which ja must stay outdoors. Must stay outdoors, and I'll point out some other indoor bonsai as we go along. Okay. This is a tree in rock style. It's a piece of river wash sandstone from Keystone Lake that we bored a hole in, about a one pint size hole, and took a juniper out of a five gallon nursery container and actually styled the tree to fit the container. Now the, the most difficult part about this, and this is our most difficult piece that we've ever done, would be styling a tree that is, is as visually as powerful as the rock was. It has to be in balance, and if it was not in balance, it just wouldn't work. It took another two years to come up with a stand that was visually appropriate and in sync with the tree and the, its rock, and that made it a very, very oh, yeah. difficult tree. Well, I can see that the, the three of them do go together because this is very, this stand is quite rustic. Mm -hmm. um, and it's nestled into the rock, and uh, looks like you've worked with the shape of the tree to go with the, the flow With the, the rock, rock, sort of looking uh -huh. like a wind blown. And of course, we keep this one trimmed back by pinching rather than trimming with scissors, we pinch this foliage off 
and that keeps it from getting brown on its tips if we just pull the tips of the foliage off and it gets the foliage nice and compact and bushy. Uh -huh. And that's another technique that is used in your conifers of bonsai is to pinch the foliage rather than trim them with scissors or shears. And this is something you do throughout the growing throughout season? Throughout the growing season, once or twice a year, give it a uh -huh. real good tight trimming uh -huh. to keep it bushy. If not, it gets long and stringy and loses all of its inner foliage. How often do you have to water this? That needs to be watered at least once a day because of the small amount of root space in it. And when it gets July and August, although the junipers like hot, dry weather, it needs to be watered at least every day. It, it'll go two days without water, but it might put it under some sort of a stress if we allowed it to do that. So if you go on vacation and take care of having the dog fed, make sure the bonsais are watered too. Absolutely. <laughs> bonsais need water just like puppy dogs. Good deal. Okay. Some of our other bonsai, we said that we want to imitate a natural tree in nature. This is a bald cypress that we've worked on. This is its third year of work. We're just now starting to work on the top, getting it refined. Mm -hmm. We worked on the root structure for the first two years of the tree, and then we uncovered the roots and put it into a bonsai pot this year. There again, it's in a very shallow container, so you have to stay on top of it as far as the watering goes. That's an outdoor hardy tree. It's one of the hardiest trees in this area. And it's one that survived the Dust Bowl probably better than any other tree around here was a bald cypress. Well, I know tree. there are some on the OSU campus, and they survived the students' foot traffic, so <laughs> they've got to be tough trees. <laughs> when tough, this thing, when it gets tough outside, this thing just drops its leaves and goes dormant until everything starts to loosen up again. Oh, that's a good kind of tree to use. Though. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Again, this is a, a good form of a cascade where it's cascading maybe down a cliff or something. This is a, a pyracanthia which it's got beautiful white flowers in the spring, red berries in the fall, and thorns to stick you with. If oh, you, yes. It's called a fire thorn as well. And that shows the typical cascade style, where one branch trails down and cascades over the side of a cliff or whatever. Mm. All right. On down, another indoor bonsai, lantana, is a beautiful indoor bonsai. And the lantana gives excellent flowers and things like that. You can keep them outside during the summer, but in, in the uh, fall, you have to bring them in the house. Uh, other similar plants that you could work with that has beautiful blooming flowers on it would be uh, azaleas and uh, bougainvillea, mm -hmm. plants such as that. Oh, boy. This one has lots of dead wood on it. And, Sue, so we have done this simply to give it age and character. There's one small sliver of bark feeding this entire foliage. And this is the front right here. Uh -huh. One little piece comes up and feeds all this foliage. And there again, it's been artistically styled into a triangle. The top, it does have a top to it and a back branch and a couple of side branches. And what we're trying to say with this tree, there's one little sliver of bark feeding it is that, you know, to be a bonsai, it has to be art. Yes. If it is art, it has to evoke some sort of emotion out of you. And what this tree is basically saying is, I've had everything conceivably thrown at me that you can throw at me, and I'm not about to give up yet. Now, a lot of people you know, and we've talked about it, can relate with that. Why, that certainly. are from here in Oklahoma. Yeah, hard time. So that's a good old Oklahoma tree. Well, it looks like it's been through some rough weather. Oh, absolutely, <laughs> but it loves it now. It's, it's all the rough part is over with, and like I said, it has tremendous amount of character due to the dead wood. I understand you've got one that a lot of Oklahomans can relate to. Absolutely. Let's look at you that. You know, what bonsai is all about nowadays is taking trees indigenous to your area. And the Siberian elm was planted in the early 30s as a windbreak mm -hmm. by the farmers in southern Kansas and northern Oklahoma. And of course, to be windbreak material, it should be a little bit taller than this. But every year we'll find a few of these that have been naturally dwarfed by the deer and the cattle and the elements. And for every two or three dozen that we find, we'll find one worthy of taking on the artistic styling that's needed for bonsai. We dig it up, work with it for four or five years, and then offer it for sale. This is our top piece. This is our number one tree. It's a Siberian elm that was collected. It's about 30 or 35 years old, and it was collected out on the prairies of Oklahoma. We've worked on it since December of 1982. You notice a little swing on here, yes. all right? Some of the purists will lead you to believe in bonsai that the swing is not proper or whatever, but it's on there for a reason. It's to get people that don't know what bonsai is to see a bonsai when they walk past this rather than a tree or plant in a pot. Mm -hmm. And they automatically realize that it's something more than just a plant when they see that swing. In oh, fact, yes. many of them 
will gaze at it and then turn around sort of watery-eyed to me and tell me this is the tree they used to play on when they were a kid. And that's what bonsai is supposed to be about. So it's all about creating a tree that evokes an emotion? Uh, it evokes an emotion out of you, and uh -huh. if it does, then we've served our purpose. It is an, a piece of art. Oh, this is just great. Well, thank you so much for showing us okay. around. I understand that you also have some bonsai supplies. We've got lots of bonsai supplies. Let's take a, just a real short look at those. Sure. And then we'll have to say goodbye. All right.